All right, when you order from Quick Performance, this is the kind of cool stuff that you get. So, we'll pull this out. Heck yeah. Show you what we're looking at here. We got ourselves a shim kit. We got our way to paint on. We got some paint here. We got all new hardware. We got new bearings. We got new seals, new bolts. Super complete kit. That's why I love working with these guys. Um, so we got that right there. We also opted for, instead of a crush collar, we decided to go with an actual sleeve. Um, oh, heck yeah. They even give you these little guys too, which a lot of times they say are hard to get. This is actually what goes in right inside of there uh, to support the end of the pinion. There's a bearing, I believe it's probably that guy. And then this is like a little clip um, so nothing comes out. They say these are pretty hard to come by, so it's cool that they provided that. And then I'm guessing this in here is our sleeve because we're not using a crush collar. So that's pretty cool. I think they supplied me with some goodies too. There might be some t-shirts and stuff in there. These guys are awesome. Um, I'll go ahead and show you that in a second. Um, let's get down to the nitty gritty here. I bet you this is our ring and pinion from Motive. And then finally in this nice Yukon axle box, hey look, we got a, we got a gasket, okay. I'll take that, thank you very much. Um, and I'm pretty sure this is our limited slip in here. So we'll go ahead and unbox everything, but super awesome, one-stop shop, quick performance. If you don't know about them, that's their logo. They've been talked about on Roadkill, on all these other different like really cool motor trend shows. I started working with them and by, when I say working with them, I'm not sponsored or anything, but I started ordering stuff from them a couple years back. Their website's great. Their customer support is great. And you get all quality stuff. These are all Timken bearings made in the USA. Um, all really good stuff. So we'll go ahead and unbox everything, lay it on the table, and let you see it. A couple things to point out quickly. Um, just triple check. Make sure your gear ratio is right first. So a nice thing to do is go ahead and count the teeth on your ring gear. Divide it by the number of teeth on your opinion and that should be a ratio i've got 38 here and 10 here is a 380 gear and that's what i ordered so we are good um, another thing is this is going to tell you a lot so if you look on here closely there are some numbers and with these numbers over here kind of where my finger that's wiggling is i know it's hard to read take my word for it that is the dimension that you want to get from the center line of the bearing to the face right here where my thumb is touching that's like your initial setup. That's how these gears were run in. You want to be within a couple thousands of that before you even attempt to run your pattern, and that should get you really, really close. So that is marked there. Um, another thing that I found was nice when I was inspecting this, and you will want, will want to clean everything, is if you look around here, if I can find it, um, it's written in kind of fine, but take my word for it again, it says BL8 slash 10. Well, what does that mean? That means backlash. They're telling you the backlash set up for this is eight to 10,000. So super helpful. Um, and additionally, it does come with instructions. We'll tell you about patterns and all the kind of stuff like that. So I'll go ahead and read the instructions too. Um, but, you know, like I said, we'll clean everything. I think the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and drive that bearing in right here while this is still on the workbench. And then I'll go ahead and mount everything back up in there. And then we can start working on these pieces and get the new races driven in. I did go to the auto parts store and rent one of these guys. It's part number 57119 from AutoZone. And what that looks like, if I didn't, if I can open it, is a bearing driver set. So this will help us drive all of our races in, um, which will be good. And then for the actual bearing itself that goes in the carrier, carrier uh, we'll use a press over there or just take it to a shop and you can have them press it on. So uh, probably throw the time lapse on here now and just start working. Okay, first things first, uh, before I go ahead and chalk it up in my little tool here, I go and install that very small, I'll call it like a pinion support bearing. It's a little uh, roller bearing, you just drive that in. After that, I will flip around and start installing the inner and outer races. Uh, these are the pinion bearing races, so just get your driver, uh, go ahead and knock those in. They should go in pretty easily. Everything got pressed in here fine, no issues. So this part is basically assembled. Now the next thing we've got to do is press this bearing onto here. Actually, what I decided to do is I'm going to go ahead and throw this in the freezer and throw that in the oven, and we should be able to slide it on. I checked the measurements. It only needs to grow a couple of thousandths, and... People leave this in overnight, but really you're only going from like room temperature down to like 40 degrees. Whereas with this, 
throw it in the oven at 350, you're jumping way up. So most of your growth is coming from thermal expansion and not contraction. Um, so I think I should be able to do that. So we'll do that in a second. All right, so because I couldn't find that tool, we threw the pinion in the freezer for about 20 minutes. Uh, we've had the bearing in the oven for about the same, around 350. And uh, we're gonna see if we can press this thing on here in the kitchen carefully. Wife is not home. We'll see if she watches these videos or not. Let's see if we can get this to, nice. That's how you do it. She is on there. But let me explain real quick the, like what a crush collar is. You've probably heard that before. So this is a crush collar and this is what helps determine your preload on your pinion bearings, which in turn, determines how much force it takes to rotate the pinion. And you want so many inch pounds for new bearings versus old. So one way to do it, and the way they used to do it, was to use a crush collar where you tighten it a ton and eventually this thing deforms and it's like locked in. If you go too far, you're screwed. Um, so you gotta creep up on it and you gotta keep checking your torque, right? And sometimes it takes like a ton of force to crush this thing um, and it's a huge pain in the butt. Now you can do that, and the kits that you buy normally come with two of these because they figure you're gonna screw one up. I don't like these. What I like um, is what's called a solid spacer. So a solid spacer, instead of crushing, you can figure out how much preload you want based on how thick you make it. So, you know, if you've got a ton of shim in there, then, you know, it's gonna be wider. And if it's got less shim in there, it's gonna be narrower. And it basically determines how much preload um, you have on the bearing. So what I did is I just said, okay, you're the big sleeve, it's 408 thousandths, and they give you a single 20, one 16 thousandths, two 13, and a nine. So depending on how you stack these up, you can get all kinds of different dimensions. I did go ahead and measure this. This was 452. So we might start out right around 452, 460, whatever we can get to, you know, close with our shims and see. Okay, I'll tell you, this is a whole process. Um, you're definitely not gonna get it right the first time. Pro tip, I would start as close to whatever the crush collar you removed was, as close as you can get to that. And really very minute adjustments can make or break the correct amount of preload. So just be prepared. It's not gonna work the first time. Leave your oven on because it does help you to, to slide that outer bearing on if it's been heated up a little bit. All right, so it's taken some trial and error. I think I was at 456 in the first time. That was <clears throat> just not, not enough preload, it spun totally freely. Um, also be careful when you do this, I put a little bit of anti-seize on the threads here. Uh, you really wanna be careful because you can mess up these threads. Um, I like to use the old nut and then at the very end swap and use the new nut because the new nut, um, it's got this like thread locking compound on it. So uh, we're also doing this without the seal installed, which is smart because <laughs> you've gotta remove it a bunch of times. I'm glad I made that decision. Um, but anyways, first time we was like 456, 457, that was too many. Then I tried 444, meaning the thickness here. Um, now this is as close as I can get to the original stack. I probably should have done this the first time. Um, but last time I did it, I couldn't even turn it. So it was way too much. Um, one thing I changed from the first time is I'm back in the oven, heating that bearing up just for a couple minutes, just so I'm not having to use the nut and the yoke to draw the bearing up on there. I feel like that's probably smart and I would probably recommend doing that. All right, it's getting frustrating right now. I've tried so many different shim options. Um, <laughs> basically, if I do a 452, which is what it came with, it's, it's, uh, it's too loose, right? If I do a 450, if I do a 448, right? 4,000 is difference, it's way too tight. If I do a 450, it's still too tight. It's like upwards of 30, inch pounds even without um, this guy in here. So anyways, I'm playing with it, playing with it. I've got it right around 2019 inch pounds. I'm gonna try go ahead, maybe against my better judgment, install the sleeve and check it again and then retorque it another time and see if, if anything changes. I'm hoping that that sleeve or that um, seal adds a little bit more drag and that kind of helps me get to that roughly 25 mark. I'd really like to see it, like, even if it's like 23, I'm, I'm like gonna be okay with that. Okay, so what we mean by rotating torque. So, we're right, we're like 23. If we go the other direction, we're right above 
just above torque. Let's talk about pinion depth. Pinion depth is the measurement from the face right here of the pinion to the center line of the carrier. Okay, <clears throat> now one might think that you could take the bearing race, which sits right in here like so, and just measure this and take half of that dimension and that's the center line. Well, sure, that's the midpoint of this circle, but if this has been machined at a different height, higher or lower, that could effectively affect where the true center line is. So you gotta do two things. You need to record this outer diameter divided by two, that's the center line of this circle. Then, and this is where specialty tools kind of come into play, you've got to measure the distance from the face right here, from this, you know, the mating surface where the, the bearing caps go to the lowest point right here. That dimension compared against this dimension will tell you the true center line. So basically, if let's say you measure this for round numbers, let's say it's three inches, okay? Half of that's an inch and a half. If you measure from here to here, and that's 1.6 inches, that tells you that this, I'm gonna making up numbers, that tells you that this is sitting down in there further. So you've gotta take that difference into account when you measure the height from here to here. Hopefully that makes sense. Typically on the pinion, it's gonna tell you what your installed height should be. Um, so basically you wanna get the height from here to here and then determine whether or not you need to add or subtract if this was machined either higher or lower, and that will get you your pinion depth. The way you adjust pinion depth is if we come down here, basically in between this and this is a shim. Typically they come with about a 15,000 shim. You can add or subtract shims to get you the correct height, and if all of that stuff is correct, and you get your backlash set up correctly, in theory, when you put some paint on this and turn it over, it should look and run just like it did at the factory. All right, we got everything set up. Backlash is nine thousandths. Pinion bearing preload is like 22, 23 inch pounds. Everything, you know, pinion depth is within a thousandth or two of what it was stamped on the gear. So we're gonna go ahead and paint it and try and run a little pattern on here and show you. Um, one thing I am gonna have to address, right down here, see this little ring? What's happening is the, uh, the carrier there is just rubbing a little bit on that outer surface. And that's something that happens um, a lot of times if you've got, you know, a limited slip or an aftermarket, you know, you know, something or other in there. So basically you just got to go in there, take this apart and do a little bit of massaging, clean that right up and you'll get your clearance back. Everything still spins, it's just a little bit tight and uh, just want to fix that. So we'll put some paint on it, run it around, let's see the pattern. Okay, so with that marking compound, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and mark about three or four teeth um, on both sides, both the drive and the coast side. And then putting a little bit of resistance on the carrier, you wanna rotate it back and forth so you can get a pattern. Now, after you get that pattern, you're gonna to wanna to read the pattern, and I highly recommend calling Quick Performance to help you understand what that pattern means. In this case, the first pattern I ran looked okay on the drive side, but the pinion was too deep on the coast side. So they recommended that I install some shim, which is what you see me doing. After you make any shim adjustments, you have to reset your backlash and then run another pattern. Again, you're not gonna get this right the first time. It's an iterative process, take your time. Okay, here's my final pattern. So what you're looking for here is a pattern that is centered in both directions. So heel to toe and face to flank. This is on the drive side and honestly, it doesn't really have any sharp edges. It's a pretty solid pattern. On the coast side, if I'm being completely honest, I was kind of fighting coast side and drive side here. You probably could have added another thousands or so with the shim to make it absolutely perfect. But after speaking with quick performance, I think this is still gonna be totally acceptable. Um, when you're all done, it never hurts to check backlash one more time. You will wanna go through and torque everything to spec. Make sure you provide enough preload on your carrier bearings. You really can't have too much preload here. Um, same as with your pinion bearings, the bearings want preload. So once you're done with all of that, now it's the fun part. You get to paint it whatever color you want. I decided to go gold in this case. Um, hey, you know, my transmission is gonna be the only thing that gets to see this, but what the heck, I thought it looked cool. Now, when you're underneath the car and you're installing this thing back in place, make sure you use some Permatex and put the Permatex around the studs. A lot of times you can get leaks coming up past the studs, so make your little ring of Permatex around there, tighten everything to spec, and you're almost good to go. All right, call me a dummy. I went out and drove the car for like, I don't know, 
15 minutes. Came back, thought I was all done. Found this, and obviously I did put 8090 GL5 gear oil in it, but um, it also says in much smaller print that you need friction modifier. Again, they tell you this, this is on me, but I really wish they wouldn't have done this big thing here in all red and then this tiny little thing. So you gotta go get yourself some friction modifier. This is the stuff they call for, but you could probably use any kind of friction modifier. Uh, because I did fill the diff up, I went and got one of these two. It's kind of nice to have a little, one of these little guys. Um, this will allow me to pull some fluid out of the diff. That way, I mean, obviously you normally put this in first and that way when you fill everything up, you don't overflow it. But anyways, we'll pull the cap off, add this in and be done with it. All right, now that you got it filled with fluid, before you go out there and totally thrash this thing, um, I had some more conversations with Quick Performance and they gave me a lot of good details on the break-in. The break-in is very critical for these, so you have a long and trouble-free life for your gears. So <clears throat> here's what they told me and I'm gonna convey to you. It's very important to, first of all, you wanna limit highway driving. You wanna break these things in by driving about 15 to 20 minutes, okay, in like city, stop and go, less than 50 miles an hour. You don't wanna hold a constant speed that's not good for these things, okay? So you wanna drive around 15, 20 minutes city driving, then bring it home and let it cool down to ambient temperature. The goal is to get those gears and bearings, everything back there, that fluid, up to between 180 to 200 degrees. Once you do that, you bring it home, you let it sit for at least an hour. You wanna get it back down to ambient temperature and then repeat that four more times. So five drive cycles. After that, listen, if you wanna go out, do a burnout, whatever, try out the thing, sure, go for it. Probably what I wouldn't recommend at that point is going and hopping in and doing like a three hour road trip where you're just sitting at 60, 70 miles an hour or more for a prolonged period of time that builds up a lot of heat. Not to say that you, know, you can't do that eventually, but really probably the first like 500 miles, take it easy on the long trips and then you will have no problems with this rear end. Just to wrap this up, I wanna say I had absolute phenomenal customer service with Quick Performance. I am not sponsored by Quick Performance in any way, shape, or form. I just purchased my things through them. I speak with them on the phone. They're super helpful. Um, they did kind of help me out, give me a pretty good deal on these gears. Um, they're super personable, and they're willing to help you. When I had questions about setup, about bearing preload, about um, understanding what the pattern looked like. I wound up sending them pictures. They would respond to me. They'd call me back. They sent me emails. Fantastic customer service. So support those smaller, not that they're small, but support, you know, those smaller local American companies like Quick Performance. You guys are gonna have a ton of fun in your old muscle car or truck. All right, guys, that'll wrap it up for this video. See you next time on Truck and Roll.